Hello everybody. Rose Hill Plantation is located at 2677 Sardis Road in Union, South Carolina. It is the former estate of William Henry Gist, former governor of South Carolina. The plantation at one time consisted of 2,000 acres. The estate is now a state park and consists of 44 acres. After Gist died in 1874, the mansion and land remained in the Gist family, but both the mansion and the land were leased to tenants. The U.S. Forest Service purchased the plantation in 1938, and it became part of the Sumter National Forest. In 1942, Clyde Franks, who was from Lawrence, South Carolina, purchased the mansion along with 44 acres from the Forest Service. Mr. Franks restored the house and the gardens and opened it to the public in 1943. Mr. Franks also added period furniture to the mansion, although there are some pieces that are original to the house. Mr. Franks sold the property to the South Carolina Park Service in 1960. Rose Hill Plantation was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1970. When you get to the entrance of the plantation, you will be met by a long driveway that will give you a glimpse of Rose Hill in the distance. Also, the entranceway gives a very nice first impression of the ground surrounding the estate. I was told that some of the trees on the property are two to three hundred years old. As an example, this oak tree is thought to be around three hundred years old. And here is the house as you see it from the front lawn with the large magnolia trees that are believed to be around two hundred years old. A beautiful sight, no question. The house is two and a half stories. The first two levels were used as living quarters and the third level was used as living and storage areas. The house features two-tiered front and back porches, as well as a side porch, as you can see on the right. Here is the back of the house, and you can see the tiered porches just like the front. I don't think I mentioned the reason the estate was named Rose Hill and that is because of the many varieties of roses planted in the formal gardens that surrounded the estate. William Gist was born in Charleston, South Carolina on August 22, 1807. He was the illegitimate child of Francis Fincher Gist and Mary Boyden. He moved with his father to Union County, South Carolina in 1811. His father passed away in 1819 when William was 12 years old, and William's uncle, Nathaniel Gist, was appointed as his guardian. Gist would go on to attend South Carolina College in Columbia, South Carolina, where he studied law and was expelled in 1827 for leading a boycott of Stewart's Hall. The boycott was due to living restrictions at the college. South Carolina College is now known as the University of South Carolina. Despite being expelled, Gist did pass the bar and returned to Union and took over his inheritance, including the land that once belonged to his father. There is some question if Gist or his father started the initial construction of the house but there is no doubt that William Gist oversaw the bulk of, if not all of, the construction. Also, it is not known how much, if any, slave labor was used in building the house. But William Gist did own slaves, as many as 178 at one time, so it's reasonable to assume that slave labor was used to build the home but no records exist to confirm this. What is known is that slave labor was used to make the bricks used for the construction. 
Gist started the construction of Rose Hill in 1828, the same year he married Louisa Bowen. Louisa died in 1830 after giving birth to their daughter, Maria Louisa Gist. Gist married Mary Elizabeth Rice in 1832, and they had 12 children. Only four lived to adulthood. The construction of the mansion was also completed in 1832. In 1833, Gist was indicted as an accessory to murder due to a confrontation in Union, South Carolina, where his brother-in-law shot and killed a man. This reportedly happened on Main Street in Union. The case was later dropped by the circuit court. Gist's political career began in 1840 when he won election to the South Carolina House of Representatives. He ran as a strong supporter of states' rights that included the right to own slaves. He was elected to the South Carolina Senate in 1844 where he served three terms and was then appointed governor of South Carolina by the General Assembly. He was governor from December of 1858 until December of 1860. Gist was the 68th governor of South Carolina. At the front entrance to the mansion, above the door, you will see a decorative fan-style window. And there is also a similar one above the rear entrance door. These types of windows got their name from the resemblance to handheld fans that were popular in the day. I was told during my tour of the home that the front door is original to the house. I may have been told that other doors in the mansion are also originals, but I don't remember. The brick front porch is not original to the house and was added by Mr. Franks during his renovation of the house in the early 1940s. The original porch was wood. Once you enter the front door, the first thing you see is the staircase leading to the second floor. The staircase is absolutely beautiful and you are able to walk up the stairs when the tour moves to the second floor. One of the rooms located on the first floor is the dining room. When they were restoring the room, they were able to scrape down to the original color. So the green you see here is the color it would have been when Governor Gist lived here. The chandelier is not original and was added in the early 1900s. Of course, the dining room would have been used for family meals as well as for formal occasions at the mansion. I can imagine that this room was a very popular place in its day. This image gives another look at the dining room and you can also see Stephanie, the park ranger, who gave the tour of the mansion. I also wanted to point out the four cloth under the table. These were also known as oil cloths and wax cloths and painted canvas. They were very popular from the 18th century to the early 20th century. These cloths were used to protect floors from damage or spills. The cloths also were used on tables and shelves. And here is another look at the fireplace in the dining room. If you look on the right side, you can see a small white square with green paint. This is a small section that shows the original paint. The sitting room is also located on the first floor. This room would be what we call today the den or family room. This room probably held a lot of discussions of state and national politics that no doubt included the Civil War, succession, and slavery. This room features a fireplace and portraits of Governor Gist and his second wife, Mary Elizabeth and also a piano and a portrait of Mary Elizabeth's sister, Sarah Ann Rice. 
Also in the sitting room is a bust of Governor Gist that was made in 1859 while he was still governor. Governor Gist also requested a bust be made of President James Buchanan, who was the president preceding Abraham Lincoln. There is no record of why he made this request. Governor Gist is on the left and President Buchanan on the right. As mentioned earlier, Gist served as governor of South Carolina from December of 1858 until December of 1860. The plantation served as the governor's mansion during his term as South Carolina did not have a dedicated governor's mansion at this time. But this was not unusual for many states during this period. Today the governor's mansion is located in Columbia, South Carolina, which is the state capital. The current governor's mansion has been in use since 1868. Governor Gist was a passionate states' rights advocate and was a firm believer in the right to own slaves. Gist played a very important role in South Carolina's succession from the Federal Union in December of 1860. Because of this, he became known as the Succession Governor. Gist was a signer of the Ordinance of Succession on December 20, 1860. Gist actually left the governor's office the day that the Succession Convention convened on December 14, 1860. He signed the Ordinance of Succession as a convention member. Governor Gist's bedroom was on the second floor. The bed you see is the governor's bed, and the armoire is also probably original to the house. The dress on display belonged to Gist's second wife, Mary Elizabeth Gist. In this room, you will see examples of various toiletries that would have been used during the time that Governor Gist lived here. Here is a picture of the bed, and as you can see, it is very extravagant and suits the room quite well. Also, I did ask about the wood flooring that you can see in this photo, and it is thought to be original. The coat you see on the bed was owned by Governor Gist, and I was told that he wore it for special events such as programs honoring the military and parades. This is an image of the armoire that, as I said earlier, is thought to be original to the house. Also, on the second floor is the children's room. This room is located right beside the master bedroom. Above the crib is a portrait of one of William and Mary's daughters. I believe this is Ellen Gist, who died when she was just five years old. If I am wrong, I apologize, and someone please correct me in the comments section. This is the ballroom, which is also located on the second floor. This room was also probably used as living quarters at times, and there appears to be evidence that this room had a dividing wall at some point. I can imagine the women dressed in their formal gowns and the men in their top hats and black coats enjoying an evening of activities in this room. Here is a closer look at the piano in the ballroom and the workmanship on this piece is really impressive, especially the legs. We will move outside to take a look at a few buildings and the formal gardens around the mansion. Yes, there is certainly more to see in the house, but in order to keep this video at a decent length, we will look at other areas of this incredible plantation. I wanted to mention that the mansion is made of brick, but Governor Gist had it covered in stucco around 1860. Also, Governor Gist did live here until his death in 1874. Only two original plantation buildings are still standing at the site. These include the mansion, 
in the kitchen house located directly behind the main house. Because fires were common in kitchens during the 1800s, they were normally kept separate from the house. The original kitchen was made of wood and did burn down and was replaced during the time that Governor Gist lived here by the brick structure that you see today. The other buildings that you see are representations of what might have been on the site. There would have been many other structures such as a loom house, a cold storage area, blacksmith building, and most certainly a barn and slave housing. These buildings have been lost to time and there is no record to indicate where they may have been located. This five-room house is located behind the mansion and was home to the Giles family. The Giles family were caretakers of Rose Hill from the 1940s through the 1970s. Selena Giles gave tours of the mansion until her death in 1951. Her daughter, Louise, was the caretaker and tour guide until her retirement from the State Park Service in 1973. The formal gardens that surround Rose Hill have many similarities to the time that Governor Gist and his family lived here. Of course, there are the beautiful southern magnolia trees in front of the mansion. Also, the location of the gardens are certainly similar to when the guests were here. The front brick wall and iron fencing that you see serve as a gateway to the magnolia trees and the garden leading to the front door of Rose Hill. Also, if you are standing in front of the mansion to your left is more formal gardens for you to enjoy. The grounds surrounding Rose Hill are beautiful and certainly worth exploring. Be sure and take the time to walk around the area if you visit. Not far from Rose Hill, maybe a mile or so, is the Gist Family Cemetery. Many members of the family are buried here, including Governor Gist, of course, and his second wife, Mary Elizabeth Gist. William Henry Gist, was born on August 22, 1807, and passed away on September 30, 1874. He was 67 years old. Mary Elizabeth Gist was born on April the 11th, 1813, and she passed away on June 13, 1889. She was 76 years old. Now, I did not see Mary's tombstone in the cemetery. I know she is buried there because I have seen pictures of her grave. I did notice that there were a few tombstones missing from some of the graves, and I assume this is due to damage. From the pictures I have seen, I believe this is Mary Gist's grave to the left of William Gist. If anyone knows for sure, please let me know in the comment section. Our last stop will be at the Slave Cemetery. This graveyard is located a short distance from the Gist Family Cemetery. The graveyard is filled with unmarked stones as the only indicators of the people who were buried here. There is no signage to mark this location at this time. I was told in 2021, archaeologists from the South Carolina State Park Service, with the assistance of the University of Tennessee at Knoxville Archaeology Department, were able to locate over 200 grave sites at this location. All of the flags that you see represents a grave, and there are a lot of these flags in this area. Each flag has a number on it so that the researchers could record each grave they found. We will probably never know the identity of those who are buried here since no records were kept with this information. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. Rose Hill Plantation is certainly worth your time to visit if you are ever in the Union, South Carolina area. Also, I would like to thank the staff at Rose Hill as they were very helpful and answered all the questions I had. They were professional in every sense of the word. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, leave a comment. I hope you have a great day and I will have another video out soon.